Hello everyone, it is Deborah with Kensington Cross Stitch. Today is the 31st of December 2023 and it is also my one year floss anniversary. So I have been kind of watching that date come up um, on the calendar and thinking, I can't believe it's been a year. This has just been uh, a phenomenal experience for me to get to know so many of you through comments and through Instagram and for, through chatting in various ways and, and meeting people at retreats. So. Um, Thank you to everybody who has made this first year so absolutely wonderful. Um, what we're doing for our episode today is um, I'm going to go through and show you all of my finishes from 2023. So that is fully finished objects, it's just finished objects, anything that I have um, finished the stitching on this year. And um, so it's kind of like the speed run of the last year of my floss tube channel. Although I have to say there are a couple pieces that you have not seen at all yet because I've done them very recently. So those will be fun. Um, but like I said, we've got FFOs, we've got FOs, we've got uh, a couple of new pieces. I've got a couple of the, you know, obviously the projects I was working on all year with you to show off. Off. Um, and there is really no order to what I'm going to show you. It is, um, I have precarious piles of things in front of me and it was, it's entirely arranged by how can I get these things to fit together and not spill over and fall. So that's kind of the organizational system we have. Um, if I did my math correctly, if I counted them, I had 33 finishes in 2023. I started the year with 12 whips, I'm ending the year with 13 whips, and I had 33 finishes in that time. Um, I think that's a really great track record. I mean, I do a lot of smalls, which you all know if you're, if you've watched the channel before, you know that I'm mostly a small stitcher, but I did get a couple of big projects in. I kind of learned a system that works for me for those types of projects. Um, wide variety of kind of different stitching and holidays and seasons. So, um, I think it'll be fun. You know, obviously if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen some or most of this before, um, but hopefully it'll be fun to just kind of go through in a quick way to see everything all in one go. So um, with that, I think I will launch in. So there we go. So I'm gonna start with the largest objects first, just because that way I can get them done and kind of set to the side and I don't have to worry about them anymore. So we will start with um, our biggest things. And of course that the biggest one for me was the project that I was stitching all year on my channel with you. Um, this is an adaptation of Christmas Market by Twin Peak Primitives. And the way that I was doing this is I was stitching just one stall or element each month I started in December and I wound up finishing it kind of in October and then I wound up fully finishing it in December. So it's been hanging in my uh, living room with my Christmas display this year, which is exactly what the point of this project was. Um, I got this frame. Wow, I totally blanked out there for a second. I got this frame from Michael's, um, I think about the time that I was starting this project. And it was one of those pieces that had been custom cut and wasn't used for some reason. And so I paid $9 for it and thought, if this works, it'll be fantastic. And then I spent all year waiting to find out if it would work. And I think it worked perfectly. Um, so I just um, I did this myself. I pinned it uh, and then I put kind of this burlap paper on the back and put a hanger on it just to seal it up. Um, and I am really pleased with this one. It I didn't put any glass on it. I would have had to get some custom glass cut for it, but I did decide that um, it's only going to be up for probably six-ish weeks every year because it will come up with my my Christmas display so I think it'll be fine and the rest of the year it will be wrapped up and protected so that is um, Twin Peak Primitives and this is a an adaptation of the Christmas market pattern by them so that is our first piece um, I will, as I kind of remember, I may mention fabrics and um, threads and things like that. If I forget, if I don't know, um, please just ask. I am happy to share that information. One of the things that I fell down on this year was actually tracking that information in kind of the way that I had been in a notebook. Um, I think because I was doing floss too, I was like, well, if I needed it, if that information is there somewhere. Um, but if there's any of that that you particularly want or are interested in, please let me know in the comments and I would be happy to try and um, either pull that information for you or look it up for you. So um, there we go. So that was finish number one. 
Our next finish is one that I finished very recently. Um, and this is Winter ABCs by Little House Needleworks. And this is a piece that I, um, is part of a sal that I am hosting. And this is the A Year of ABCs sal. Uh, and what we are doing is we're stitching all four of these seasonal pieces um, at a very sedate pace throughout the year. And we've divided them up each pattern into three. So over the course of three months, you complete one over the course of 12 months, you've completed all four. Uh, and they are, we're working just to advance advanced enough that you can have them fully finished and up on um, a display if you would like for that particular season. So we're doing A through I in the first month, J through R in the second month, and then S through Z in the third month. So this is a piece that I finished um, in November and then I have gotten it fully finished. And this is a kind of a lattice work frame that I have um, added it to using the washer and magnet method. Um, and it does have this little extra space at the top, which I like. I like the fact that it has, um, that the frame itself has some um, style and design to it in addition to the piece. Uh, and then I will be adding something at the top, maybe a bow, maybe something like this each time just to kind of fill that space and give it a little bit of a 3D look. So that is... Um, winter ABCs uh, and we are already working on spring for this month if you'd like to join in please feel free at any point um, to join in on that sal but it's been a very we're doing it in a very leisurely way so you feel like you can um, still continue to work on other projects while getting these done over the course of the year so that is um, winter ABCs by Little House Needleworks this is on a 32 count fabrics by Stephanie in French blue um, and then I made a color change I switched out a lot of the red for kind of a, a winter blue just to make it like that so that is our next large piece the next piece to show you is a little one that I worked on just early in um, in November and December and this is called winter hobby horse by uh, sweet Annette which is something I got on Etsy uh, and it is a um, it's similar to like a mill hill or something like that in that you're not stitching on fabric. This one you're stitching on a piece of laser cut wood uh, and then it does come with a piece of pre-cut felt to finish it off and it comes with all of the little pieces that you need to assemble. So I was able to finish this and fully finish it in the same day. I mean the stitching took me a while but the day that I finished it um, I was able to fully finish it because it took I don't know 10 minutes including getting getting into this room and putting everything in. So it was a very quick finish, which I liked. Um, and I really love kind of the, the elements of that. And it's got the snow globe and the poinsettia. Um, it does have some metallic floss, which gives it just a little bit of extra style. There's a, quite a lot of backstitching in this, but it's another one where the backstitching really does make the piece um, pop and all of the elements stand out. So that is Winter Hobby Horse by Sweet Annette. And then the next large piece that I have is a scrappy advent calendar that I worked on. I started this um, when I was at the farm, stitching at the farm in November. Uh, and this is from a Rico Designs book, which is um, kind of a German publisher that I bought. I bought the book a number of years ago. Um, and what I was doing was over the course of the year, or over the course of the last couple of years, actually, I've been keeping scraps of my other projects. Um, if I had a piece that I thought would be big enough, I would keep that scrap with the intention of eventually stitching up this piece. Um, and I knew that I wanted to do them as individual pieces. The original calls for you to make buttons with them. Um, and I wanted to do something similar, but I wasn't necessar necessarily sure that I wanted to do buttons. Uh, and so I wound up going with these kind of flat medallions. Um, and then I have finished them on just a single piece of um, comic book board and then using some sticky velveteen and then a little piece of pearl cotton to hang them on and so I just used um, six colors of Vicky Clayton silks um, on a variety of sizes of fabric um, sometimes I stitch with one strand sometimes I stitch with two um, I just kind of picked the colors as I felt um, felt like it with each of those projects and then um, I found this 
at, um, I think it was Joanne, and this is actually a card holder. So if you want to, you can slide greeting cards, Christmas cards into these little stars. Um, and I thought, oh, that's really great because it's got 23 small stars and then one at the top. So it was perfect for a 24 count um, advent calendar. And I bought it and I thought, well, we'll see. And I think it worked out really well. Um, it's a little bit precarious, but uh, in terms of how they are hung, but easily remedied. Um, so far, it's been living on my kind of dining room table and the cats have not bothered it, um, which has been amazing. But I really like that piece. I love that it is kind of bringing together some elements of past projects in, in a collection. And I did purposefully finish these in a way that if I want to, I could display them or use them in another way in the future. But I think for this year, and probably at least for a while, I will use this this star. I like it. It's a, a nice 3D display. So that is a project by Rico Designs. All right. Those were kind of the big precarious ones. Now we're going to get into the piles and then you're going to see them kind of stacking up over here, which could be problematic in other ways. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so the next one I want to show you is a piece that you have not seen at all. Um, if you watched my Flossmas, you know that I opened up the advent calendar from um, Historical Sampler Company each day during the videos. And as part of that uh, box, we got three different patterns with the box. Um, and I wound up stitching up the very first one um, just over the course of a I think two days uh, right around Christmas time. So this is Reindeer Snow Globe by Historical Sampler Company. And I think that that is just such a sweet little pattern, um, that little reindeer. And I, um, I stitch everything. It came with all of the threads. It came with this 14 count Ada. Um, and so I really loved those colors. And the project does, does call for you to use beads in, uh, for his nose and in the red elements kind of down here. I wound up switching that out. I had this little pack of white beads, kind of clear white beads, um, that I had gotten in a, you know, grab bag or something like this in the past. And so I wound up switching that out and using those for the snow. Um, and they have a little bit, they're not the kind of round beads. They're, they've got a little bit of, um, extra kind of layering to them. I'm not sure you can't really see that, but I thought that that would just be a really cute way to use up those beads. Um, and the pro the project does come with the finishing pieces as well. Um, it comes with the bow, it comes with the easel and the little piece of canvas that you can stitch it on, which I really like. I'm going to keep those, I think, for another project, but I was realizing um, my kind of place where I have like 3D displays is getting a little bit full and I might actually make this one into a um, like a pillow finish or something like that that will go on to the Christmas tree because I'm still filling that out a little bit. So I think that's what I will probably do and then I will keep the finishing up just um, pieces for something else in the future because I think that's a really cute display as well. So that is Reindeer Snow Globe by Historical Sampler Company. It did come with two other projects which I have in my little bag as well. Um, and maybe doing those in the future too. So the next one that I have is a whip that I showed. It's, um, it was a whip that, a project that I started in, let's see, December of 2020. Um, the weekend that I moved into my house here, um, there was a snowstorm. And so all of my stuff, which was supposed to be coming the same day as I got here, um, wound up being delayed. And so I had a, after closing, I wound up having a weekend in an empty house and I didn't really have anything to do because everything was packed. Uh, and so I wound up going to Joanne and picking up a couple of cross stitch projects. And um, I started it that weekend. Uh, and then I just didn't work on it after that. Kind of, I got the rest of my stitching back. And um, anyway, I, I just, it was a project that just sat there and I thought about um, UFOing it a couple times, just saying, I'm not gonna finish this project. Uh, and then I, I would look at it and I go, but I really do like this. I like this project. I just, it was never the one that rose to the top of the to-do list. Um, and so I mentioned this in my um, whip parade last year and somebody said, um, well, just make it as a way to commemorate the weekend that you moved into your house. The, the fact that you now own this as opposed to, so make it a commemorative project, not just 
a project and I thought that was a really great idea. So I kept it on my um, whip list and then it just never got started, never got, got further. Um, but I was realizing toward the end of this year that I was getting a little antsy on a couple of projects that have just been sitting there at least for a year, if not more. And I was just really feeling like I want to get these, I want to get these done. I want to get them off the to-do list and, and move on to other projects. I don't mind carrying things over, I think to another year, but I feel like when you get a little bit further than that, I, I've I've discovered I start getting antsy on on them. So um, this was another one that I just decided a couple of, I don't know, a week or so ago, I was like, I am going to get this done. And it's in Christmas, it's a Christmas project, so I'm going to get it done. Um, and then I will have taken care of it and it'll be off the off the whip list. So I did make a couple of changes. Um, but I'm really happy. So this is the original project and it is Merry and Bright, uh, which is a dimensions kit. Uh, and I, all I did, I used all of the, the kit um, pieces, except that I swapped out. It comes with a cream Ada and I bought kind of a cream even weave um, when I started it. So that was the original project. And I decided that I like this design, but my house is not really a like mason jar um, display place. And so I decided, if I just leave that off and I just do the words, it would be small enough and could be versatile for a number of different finishes. So that's what I did. I just stitched the words uh, and that little piece of holly. And all I think I did is I moved this lettering over one, um, like one square so that it's actually centered over Mary and Bright. Um, so it was a lot of, it was not a difficult piece. It's a lot of, um, long stitches and back stitches in order to actually make up the words. Um, but that one is done. It's a tiny, I think it's a little bit too big to actually hang on a Christmas tree, but I think could make a really cute um, design or a Christmas piece for display elsewhere. So that is Merry and Bright and I am really happy. And I don't think that if you, if you don't know that there's not something supposed to be over there, you don't know that you're missing anything. I think it's just a really sweet little project. So that is um, off the whip list. I am, I'm super happy about that. Um, and I think it, it is absolutely true. It's a great way to commemorate the weekend that I moved into my house because that was a, that was a big deal. So um, there was that. The next piece that I have to show you is one of the projects that I was working on in addition to the Christmas market all year over through Floss Tube this last year. I um, decided to do my first temperature chart um, kind of as a way to commemorate the first year on Floss Tube. Um, something that I, I feel like if you're going to do them, what is it that you're commemorating? What year are you tracking in a particular way? Um, and so I decided, well, first year on floss tube. Let's see how that goes. Um, and so the chart that I chose was by Climbing Goat Designs uh, and it is Rainbow Temperature Supernova. And the moment I saw this, I found it on Etsy. The moment I saw it, I I wanted it. It looks like, um, I didn't read the, the name of it and I thought that looks like a firework explosion and I really love fireworks. Um, and it is, it's a supernova. So I picked up this chart. As you can see, it's got quite a lot of pages in it. That's because this is um, an incredibly detailed um, project guide. You can choose how many um, colors that you want. It tells you how to calibrate it for your particular um, temperature range. So you're not, you know, if you're living in Florida, you're not pulling colors for Connecticut weather. You calibrate them to your particular color um, temperature scheme. And so there's a lot of information in here about how to customize it and make it particular to you. You could choose 12 colors, you could choose 35 colors, which is what I did. And she kind of encourages a lot because that way you get all of those different flecks of colors. So this is by Climbing Goat Design. Claire is just a fantastic designer. I have been so pleased with this project. Um, and I did the version that is the minimum and the maximum. So you're stitching two colors every day. And I tended to work on it kind of once a week on Sundays. There were a few times when I got behind on that, but I did try and undo that as much as I could on a weekly basis. So I am, after a year, I am 364 days in. Of course, today is the um, 31st. So you will see that I will be adding just those two colors um, to completely fully finish the project, but I um, I wanted to show it to you today um, while I was doing this and, and you know, 
you'll 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 forgive me that I have one day left that it's not quite done, but I've decided it's close enough to show. Um, let me see here. So I wound up choosing um, some colors of my own selection. You'll see that I didn't go with a traditional um, temperature car chart color scheme. I just thought, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, and so I had primarily blues and greens and pinks um, and ranges of those. I did have a number of purples pulled. Um, I calibrated, those were the colors that were for really cold temperatures, um, but we wound up having a very mild winter this past year, and so I hardly used the purples at all. And so it was, it, I was expecting to have a little bit more color in it, but that wasn't the pattern's fault or my fault, it was just we had a mild winter and that happens sometimes. Um, but I still think it is beautiful. If you don't know that this is temperatures, if you don't know what this project is, it's just kind of an abstract piece. Um, I think it is just absolutely beautiful. I love the way that all of the colors play together. I love the the little streaks of white. Those are sort of explosion marks and they kind of mark the, the delineation between kind of um, weeks and, and give you a little bit of extra kind of um, a through line, maybe we'll say that because I can't think of the real world, kind of it gives you a through line of consistency throughout the project. Um, and then as I mentioned, you use each, um, you use a minimum and a maximum every day and each kind of line going up is a week. So you start in the center and then by day seven of that week you are um, done and then you start at the bottom and move up and that's how you stitch. Um, the one thing that I did do is I added a little color, um, kind of uh, information about what my full color range was in the center. I just kind of put them as the added explosion marks there in the center. And so starting with my purples, I started in December since that's sort of the start of winter. And then I worked my way around. So if you want to, you can actually track from coldest temperature to warmest temperature, what that color range actually was for the project. Um, which I think at works really, really well. Um, just a way to commemorate and remember what the full range was or could have been for that project. Um, there is room in the project if you want to put your location. I don't think I'm going to do that. I like it just being blank in the center. And I am deciding how I want to finish this. I think I want to frame it. Um, and I think I'm what I'm deciding is do I want to go with a round frame or a square frame? I think either of them would work and I'll probably go with a kind of a white frame for that. Um, and I may just kind of pop around the store or online and see what I what strikes my fancy for it. But I think it's one that I would like to finish as a framed piece. Um, but really beautiful. I am Every time people see it, they're just like, that is absolutely stunning. And it is, it is beautiful. So I have just been so pleased with that. Um, I am not planning to do another temperature chart this year or anytime in the near future. I really enjoyed it, um, but I feel like I don't know if I need to do it every day. I've talked in the past that I am not an everyday stitcher. And so it did take up a fair amount of my weekly stitching time, or it felt like, you know, Sundays I had to work on this one before I could do anything else. Um, and so I feel like I would like to have a break from that kind of kind of consistency, but I, that is in no way against the project itself. It's beautiful, but I just want to kind of focus on some other projects for a while. So that was our rainbow temperature supernova. Um, the next one that I have to show you is also a piece that you have not seen. I started and finished it um, in the last couple of days. And I mentioned on my very first episode of Flossmas that um, one of the, excuse me, one of the things that I did every day is I showed um, a project that I have already stitched and fully finished. And then I showed one that I would like to stitch in the future. And I put this one on day one because I said, if there's any way I can squeeze this into my stitching this year, I would love to get this one done. Um, and so I did, I was able to do it toward the end of the month. And this is O Tannenbaum by um, Colonial, hang on, Country and Colonial Stitches. And this is a piece that I think I picked up on a freebie table or at a say, you know, in a discount bin. It's quite an old pattern from I think the eighties, um, but I think it's really beautiful. Sorry for the glare there. Uh, and I knew that I was only gonna be stitching kind of the tree and, and the first line of the words. So it wasn't a big project. Um, 
And then I wound up using, I pulled four colors from Tom, Tom and Lily threads. Um, and it's a very simple color scheme. And I stitched it on 32 count over the moon fabric from Color and Cotton. Um, I'm moving, sorry, 36 count. I'm moving more into 36 count as making that part of my stitching um, regular kind of thing. And so I'm learning to use one strand versus two and, and all of those. And um, one of the things I learned with this project is one strand of Tom and Lily on 36 count is like the perfect coverage. I, they, I'm not sure what base they use. It's not DMC as far as I'm aware and is just ever so slightly thicker than um, most flosses. And when I stitch on 36 count, I feel like two strands is too thick and one strand is just a little bit too thin in many cases, but one strand of Tom and Lily on 36 count was fantastic. I loved it. So I don't know if that was just a coincidence of the, the weave of this particular 36 count. I'm going to keep trying on this. Anyway, I'm rambling and let me actually show you my project. Um, so there we go. We did, um, like I mentioned, I just decided I wanted to do just the, the tree and the first word. I left off the stars and the snow because as I was stitching, I thought, this could make a really nice stand up or something that is either maybe even in a tree design. Uh, and so I decided that I wanted to leave that off because um, I wanted to leave myself the option of doing either a kind of a triangular or a curved finish for it. Um, but I think it's just a really beautiful little simple piece. Um, I love those colors, the simplicity of it, um, and just that very subtle variegation in, in the floss. So that is O Tannenbaum by um, Country and Colonial Stitches. All right, that's stack one. So we are making progress on this. Let me see if I can not knock things over here. Okay. So the next piece I want to show you is not actually a cross stitch piece. It is a ribbon embroidery project. And I received this last November. For a while, I was a member of Tom and Lily's uh, Broderie and Color Box. Um, and this is a kit that you receive every month. And I really enjoyed being part of it in part because every third box, it's not a cross stitch project. It's a some other kind of, um, kind of stitching project. And so this one was ribbon embroidery, which I had never tried before. Um, I let my membership go, not because I didn't like it, because I, but because I was like, maybe I should stitch the things that I actually own. That was the only reason I let it go. Um, but I, the moment I saw this, I thought this was beautiful and I wanted to stitch it. I did start it last year, um, but I am a seasonal stitcher. And so early in January, I woke up one day and I was like, well, we're done with Christmas stitching. So it sat in um, in the whip pile for most of the year. But this is another one that I said, I don't want to let this go into another year. I want to get this done. So um, I took some time last week to fully fin finish and then I have fully finished this piece as well. And this is stitched on uh, a 28 count opalescent Lugana that um, Melanie dyes as well. And this is my piece. Um, I think it is absolutely beautiful. It, it, the picture was lovely. And I think in person, the colors of the, the these are silk ribbons, um, really just is absolutely stunning. I, there we go, slightly, uh, anyway. Um, I didn't put the words in the center again. I kind of like the simplicity of having it plain. Um, I definitely did not do my ribbon correctly in many cases, but you know what? I was learning, I was trying something new. I think it still looks nice. Um, I really love the piece. And so it does use Tom and Lily threads uh, as well as um, some silk ribbon from a partner company that she works with. And then I have finished it just as a simple round piece. Um, it's on a kind of a holly piece of holly fabric with some lady dot um, pom poms. And then I have finished it using the washer and magnet method. Um, and this is kind of with some just felt on the back. Uh, and I, this is a little board that hangs in my guest room, uh, bathroom. And then I try, I am wanting to develop a number of these that I can change them out seasonally. So at this point I have a Christmas, I have a winter piece, and then I have an all season piece. So, um, 
I need to keep working on those, but a really simple display, easy finish. Um, and I think it really just lets you see those ribbons and lets that shine. So that is um, Caron de Noël by um, Rotary and Colorbox. We're starting to get the prepare precarious piles over here. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, the next piece that I have finished is um, one that I finished but have not fully finished yet uh, and it's a piece that many people have seen and this is the philanthropic pumpkin by hands-on design um, this was a charity piece that she released a couple of years ago um, and I bought it at the time I was lucky enough to get a copy um, including the full finishing kit um, and then it kind of sat there for a couple of years, not because I didn't want to stitch it, but I was just distracted with other stitching. And so I decided this is the year that we're going to get it done. So I wound up having a, a work event at which I was sitting and listening for several days. Um, and that's the perfect time to do some stitching. So I was able to start and finish this during that um, couple of days. And I used all of the, the kit um, pieces. So this is a fabric that came with it. It comes, it calls for some um, DMC. I think, I don't think it comes with a thread. You have to add the thread because I wound up adding one over dyed, um, but a really simple piece. And then you finish it as um, kind of this cute little pumpkin. So I did kind of fall off the fully finishing wagon toward the end of the year. I think I was just so focused on getting pieces stitched and finished, um, but I am planning to start working on those again in the new year. Um, so that was our philanthropic pumpkin. The next piece is also a Christmas piece that I um, started in November of 2022 um, and had good intentions of continuing to work on all year and then it stopped being Christmas season anymore and so it sat. Um, but this is one that I again said, I was like, I really wanna get this done. Um, and that is Peace on Earth by Satsuma Street. And um, I mentioned this in a floss tube where I was talking about this, but these are not my colors in sense of like nothing in my house is these colors. My Christmas scheme is not these colors, but I bought it and I stitched it simply because I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it is bright and cheerful. And I wanted to just have that in my stitching and in my life. And so I did. Um, I am still deciding how I'm going to fully finish it. I'm not sure I'm going to do it in this particular method um, and where I want to put it, but I did, um, I have fully finished it. All right. I have finished stitching it um, and then I'll figure out the fully finishing as we go. I wound up not stitching the the dove um, in part because I'm not sure I need that extra space depending on how I fully finish it. If I want to, I have the threads, I have the perforated paper and can do that. But um, anyway, each of them is stitched on an individual piece of perforated paper that you would then just cut into that um, kind of flag style. So it was very portable, very easy to pick up and go and feel like you had a mini finish each time you worked on them. So there was, I'll just kind of quickly flip through these. I love the tree. I love the A's or trees. I think that's really cute. And then even when there are repeat letters, they are just a little bit different. Um, you'll notice that this is completely off center. I didn't realize until I was quite far in how off center I was. Um, and I just kept going because I decided, you know what, I'll figure it out. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it. I will take that into account. And if I really need to, I can always restitch it. But anyway, um, let's see here, another tree. There we go. So that is Peace on Earth by Setsuma Street. Um, and again, kind of one that will be, I'm, I'm ruminating on how to fully finish it, but we will get there eventually. Uh, the next piece is one that I um, stitched on a vacation that I took this fall. I It was a slightly larger project. And so I knew that I wanted to um, have some good stitching time on it. And this is a Little House Needleworks piece. Uh, and it is Suffrage Act. Um, and this is uh, stitched on a 32 count Be Stitch Me in the color Grog, which was a color of the month. 
this is really off kilter. Um, and I took a page out of Megan, the Seattle Stitchers book. She changed the color of her bunting to be suffrage colors, which were purple, gold, and white in the US. Uh, and I thought that was just a fantastic idea. And so I just carried that through and replaced most of the red, white, and blue with gold, purple, and white. I also changed the flag to be a suffrage flag. Um, I did leave the red when it made sense. So in the berries and in the bricks. Um, but other than that, I changed those colors out for suffrage colors. I love the headline of this. I love that it looks like a newspaper headline. Um, I think that I'm probably going to frame that one and put it in my office at work. I have a fairly large blank wall that needs to be filled with stuff in my office. And so I think that's what I will do um, it, with that. But I need to kind of, it's another one I will, I will finish it as I, I find a frame or find something that is of interest. Um, so the next piece is also a project that I had on my whip list for quite some time. Um, it was one that I started back in, oh, like 2012, 2010, something like this. Uh, and it's a frosted pumpkin stitchery piece. And this is part of the Aloha Summer Sampler project. Um, the original pattern has 25 of these blocks and small pieces. Um, and I decided eventually, I had started doing all of the blocks um, and I decided after letting it sit for quite some time, I said, you know what, I'm not gonna stitch the entire project, but I didn't want to lose the progress I had made. And I there were a number of the elements that I really liked. And so in the end, what I did is I just picked out five of the pieces that I thought were particularly of interest and meaningful to me and I just stitched those um, and I'll finish it probably as like a long pillow or something like that. And so um, Ferris wheel, just cause I enjoy that type of thing. Um, the whale I thought was really cute. Um, picnic basket and the music notes are a good memory with a friend. Um, fireworks, cause I love fireworks. And then I did a lot of camping when I was young. So I thought that one was a cute one. So that is kind of an adaptation of the Aloha Summer Sampler. And the nice thing about this is because there are 25 of those little motifs, you can pick and choose whichever one suits you and, and reflects your interest too, uh, if you don't want to stitch the entire project. All right, the next one that I have is a Sue Hillis piece. This is a freebie um, and it has never been released as a pattern to buy. And so you do have to kind of track it down on a freebie table or if you have a friend who stitched it and is willing to pass the pattern on to you. Um, I don't even think it has a name. I just have been calling it the watermelon thing. Um, very simple stitch. You just, I love, um, I love how it goes from full piece of um, watermelon to um, the finished piece. And this is a piece that I am probably going to be um, finishing and putting up in my kitchen because I think it was fun. Um, I did use Cosmo floss for this, which is the first time I had used those. Um, really enjoyed it. I don't know if I would go out of my way to get them because they're harder to find, um, but it was fun to try those out and, and really nice to work with. So that is kind of a watermelon piece by Sue Hillis. And this is stitched on a 30 count R&R &R, um, green piece. So a really pretty pattern and I still have another half over there so I'm slowly working my way through using that um, fabric which I've had for quite some time. All right the next piece that we have is a Helen, da Helen Daly design. Helen D is a fantastic floss tuber and has been doing just a little bit of designing the last couple of years uh, and so I have now finished Salty Seagulls. Um, this is a pattern that she released earlier this year. And the moment I saw it, I was like, well, I need that because it's adorable. I mean, look at those seagulls in their little hats and their neckerchiefs. Um, I love the brightness of the colors. Um, I love that it is kind of a, a circular piece. Um, and so this is one that I stitched. I used some of the called for threads, some of my own from Stash. Uh, and this is a 28 count even weave that I dyed myself a number of years ago. Um, I know how I'm going to finish this. I have all of the elements. I just need to sit down and have a finishing day. Um, it will take a little bit more work um, than some of the others. And so I need to sit down and, and find a good day for it, but get started. But that is Salty Seagulls by Helen Daly. The next piece is, um, I don't have the designer with me. If you need that information, I'm happy to do it. Um, and this is called End of the Line. And it is uh, from Captain America and the Winter Soldier. It's got um, 
Cap's shield, and then it's got Bucky's arm and star. So um, just a really cute piece that I found on Etsy. And the reason that I stitched this piece is because I had another project that I stitched many years ago, um, and I had turned it into kind of a bag, and I used the wrong interfacing. It basically ruined the project. Um, and so I just never actually used it. It sat in a drawer and I carried it around for year after year and move after move. And I finally said this year, I need to do something with this because it's cute. I want to, I don't want to lose the stitch, but I want to do something with it. Um, and I asked on my video, kind of asked for some suggestions and wound up deciding on, I'm going to do a drum finish for this one. But um, with the drum finish, um, I wanted to have something on the top as well, which is sometimes uh, an element of drum finishes. So I went with this piece because it's basically can be round and used. Uh, so those will two, those two projects will be eventually um, put together into one finish, and that will be the top element of the drum. So that is till the end of the line. The next one is a piece that I have stitched um, just this month. I did this as part of my Flossmas series, and it was a um, an advent calendar from this uh, Marin Martinez book that I picked up in Germany a number of years ago, and it has several different advent calendar designs in it. Um, and when I was deciding to do Flossmas, I wanted to have a project that I would work on every day and show my progress as we went. Uh, and so I picked one of the charts out of there and then stitched, as I mentioned, just one element every day uh, so that I could show my progress. And so I was able to completely finish that. Um, and this is just a series of little stamps um, of various Christmas scheme uh, or Christmas designs. And so it has just such fun little elements in it. The candy cane, the Christmas tree, presents, candles, all kinds of things. And so I would just work on one of these each day um, as we recorded our film. And then I know how I'm going to finish these. They're going to go on a, a little kind of stocking garland um, to go up on my Christmas display for next year. This is also another 36 count um, linen from Colored Cotton. It was a limited edition, so it doesn't have a name or anything like that, but I got it in a grab bag. And then I used um, Victoria Clayton silks. I was in her thread of the month club for a while, so I just have a whole series of beautiful threads. Um, so I just used those and pulled similar to the call for on the project. So that was kind of the Advent Stamps um, project that I worked on in um, in December this year. And that was my challenge to myself was to try and stitch every day. Um, and so far, I've also been able to maintain that. I have stitched every day since I finished that project as well. Um, I do have a little bit of stitching that I will do today. Um, so I think that's the longest stint of daily stitching I have ever done. I I don't think I'll probably maintain it in the new year, but it was fun just to try it out and see if I could do that and what I could accomplish with it. All right, um, let me see. I've got another pile over here, so I'm gonna pull things over. I don't know if you could hear that, that Wesley is joining us kind of as a background character. Um, okay, the next one that I finished is also a piece that I stitched up very quickly um, recently. And I had bought this little kit at a thrift shop. Uh, and this is a plaid by Busilla, Busilla? Um, piece that I picked up at a thrift shop and I thought I really liked that design. I I really liked those little presents um, and I just wondered what would happen if you just updated it with a, a nicer linen, if you used different threads. I don't even know if these are DMC threads. Um, I just wanted to kind of see what would happen to the design if you just used slightly different um, elements. And so I pulled again just kind of some Tom and Lily threads that are similar color scheme. I went more with kind of a modern kind of pink and green rather than the red traditional red and green, but I just pulled some of those um, and stitched it on a teeny tiny little scrap of um, XG design fabric that I had gotten as a sample. And then I wound up finishing it uh, just kind of on this 3D lollipop. And I think it just is, I, th I, I love how it turned out. I think it is just so pretty. Um, and it, you can tell that it is obviously that 
pattern, um, but just a little more my style and kind of modernized in terms of the pieces that you are using. Um, so as an experiment, I think it was a great thing. It was a very quick stitch, of course, uh, and the finish was quite quick as well. This is just a piece that I got from Michael's or something and had some phrase here that I've covered up um, and then just kind of turned it into that little thing. So that is Presence um, by Plaid. Which immediately fell over. All right, let's see. Another very quick piece. Um, this is Wicked Awesome Stitching and it is a corner gauge. For the first time I've remembered those words, corner gauge. Uh, pouch and this was designed again by Helen Daly and this was the freebie that we received from the Stitch New England um, retreat that was in October of this year and then I just put a little bit of a different fabric on it it came with everything that you needed um, I just chose a slightly different fabric and you make just a tiny little pouch um, and then you slide your corner gauge in there so that is wicked awesome stitching that was a cute one Let's see, um, the next one that I have is something that I finished over the summer. Um, and this is a piece by Hands On Design. And it was originally published in American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine. Um, this magazine is no longer available on newsstands, but if you have the Readly app, you can get it there. Uh, and this is a piece called Petals and Plumes. And it is just those little flamingos and you finish it as, um, a pin, pin cushion. Uh, I really like that. I had also done one of these that she had released for the Silver Needles Little Help from My Friends Club, um, and so I wanted to work on this one as well. So I have finished this. Um, obviously still not fully finished it. I know, I think I know how I'm going to do it. I have all of the elements. I just haven't done it yet. So um, you stitch them as individual pieces and then you make them into the hexes and stitch them together. So really fun colors. I think I used all of the, the called for DMC on that project. Um, yeah, just a quick little finish. And this is a Bee Stitch Me fabric. I forget what the color is, but I thought it was a really neat way to pull out some of those, uh, the yellows and blues from that. So that is Petals and Plumes by Hands On Design. Um, this piece was released in just about this time last year. I don't know if she's going to be releasing it as a project um, through her website or anything like that, but if it is, I would imagine it's gonna be coming fairly soon. So there we go. Um, oh, I have two pieces that I can't show you. So one was um, called Liberty and Cherry Tree by Priscilla's Pocket, which was a little um, kit that I bought and it has kind of an eagle and then a little cherry tree, um, very kind of a patriotic looking piece. And I finished that and that was part of my smalls exchange for the Stitch New England retreat. So I apparently didn't take a final um picture if you want to watch the video it is in a previous video but that is one that I finished um and then another one that I again didn't take a project a picture of was um Homestead which is part of the Snapperville series by Bent Creek and it's got that tiny little cat on a fence um and this is another piece that I stitched and that was my smalls exchange for um stitching at the farm in November so those are two that I stitched but don't actually have to show you the next one that I have is another very small piece, uh, and this is Pinecone um, by Mill Hill, and it's just one of those little um, seasonal pieces, and this was, um, I've done one other Mill kit, Hill kit in the past, but this was the first of the mini ornaments that I have stitched. I had another one of those times where I was just sitting for a couple of days and I needed to occupy my time. Uh, pulled this out. It was just a very quick, easy stitch. It stitched on perforated paper, and then I just finished it with some of the adhesive velveteen. And has um, back stitching. It has some or um, beading in it as well as the regular stitching. And then I just finished it as they recommended with a couple of strands of of floss. So that is pine cone by Mill Hill, and that has been hanging on my Christmas tree this year. see. Um, the next one I have is a piece that is by UB Design, who is a German designer that I quite like. Um, and I 
This one came in a booklet and they often don't have pattern names for the individual pieces. Um, and so I've just been calling it Easter Egg Bunny. So this is Easter Egg Bunny. And the series, there are nine of these patterns and they're all in the shape of an Easter egg with a different element in it. So there's one that has tulips, there's one that has the bunny, a number of different pieces. And so it's kind of a full coverage piece. I really loved that, again, with his little neckerchief. Um, and so I just stitched that in the spring and finished it on kind of this little ceramic piece with some rickrack. Um, I think that's a really sweet piece. And then this is stitched on a scrap of, um, let's see, 28 count uh, Cashel linen. It has those blue dots on it. So I thought that was a really sweet one. Next, I went through a, there was a bunny phase in the spring, in part because Katie, who's the novel stitcher, was um, hosting a bunny stitch along, the best bunny sal, and, but I went kind of overboard and I stitched a whole bunch of bunnies in a very short period of time. Um, this is a Teresa Kogut piece, and this is called Bunny and Bee. Uh, and I used, similar to the called for, but my own um, colors, and this is a piece of 32 count linen that I dyed myself a number of years ago and then I have just finished it in this little kind of 3D box. Um, I did switch out the um, knob at the top for something uh, but again very simple finish with just some fabric and ribbon there and that is Bunny and Bee by Teresa Kogut. And that's the whole that's the whole design so it's a very quick um, well it's a very small piece it is that bunny that white in that bunny was that was a lot of white stitching but really cute piece. Let's see. Next, oh, this is one of my favorites. This was a an experiment that I tried and I was really pleased with the results. Um, there is a French designer called Hélène Lebert and she produced a book that is kind of monochrome and tonal pieces. So it's pieces that are all either one color thread or shades or tones of um, one color. And so she had a lot of beautiful pieces in that book some of which I still want to finish in the future, but I, I stitched a carrot. Um, I liked the design and I wanted to turn it into a 3D carrot if I could. Um, and I succeeded. I This is absolutely one of my favorite pieces. Um, so as you can see, it's just a very simple um, little carrot stitch. The frond takes quite a lot of um, stitching, but um, I stitched this on, I think it was an 18 count, let me see here. Yep, 18 count Winter's Night by Southern Stitchers. Um, and then I used two Victorian Motto threads um, and I stitched this as two separate pieces. So I stitched the carrot on one piece and then I stitched the frond on another piece because I wanted the carrot to actually be carrot shaped and I wanted to have the frond um, be puffy but I knew that I was gonna have to gather the fabric here um, in order to stitch them together. And I figured out that the easiest way to do that was actually to stitch them as separate elements because otherwise you would have lost, you would have absolutely lost this frond in it because of the way that they are so closely, the pattern is so closely stitched, uh, designed together. This allowed me to preserve both of those and kind of layer them here where they're connected. Uh, and so I just kind of folded over this and then cinched them in. And then there is a little piece of kind of um, a thick wire almost um, that is inside of this. So it, that is why it's able to stand up on its own. And then I just stuffed each of the leaves with polyfill. Um, and so I am really pleased with that. I was able to get the carrot uh, and display the frond as well. The buttons are here because I the I foolishly only left the bottom open for stuffing and that's a very tiny small piece of um, <laughs> fabric to be trying to stuff all of your polyfill through. So I wound up cutting just a little bit of, of each of the backs of those so that I could stuff them and then I just covered them in buttons because I figure nobody can see them. And then I sealed it up by just doing a running stitch along the edges there. Um, and that is how, and then because it's the, the Ada, it's not fraying as much as you might get with, um, linen or something like that. So I, this was an experiment. It was something that I kind of had this vision of it and I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. 
Um, and I am so pleased with this. It sits on my desk, um, my office, my home office desk, um, and I love seeing it. So it kind of stays out all year, but that is um, La Carte by um, Hélène Lebert. Right, the next one is a piece by Hands On Design, um, and this was originally an exclusive for Welcome Stitchery in Spring Green, Wisconsin. Um, and I stitched just a portion of it, um, just the top piece, and it says welcome, and this hangs on my front door. Um, it has faded quite significantly since I stitched it. I knew that that was going to happen. Um, my front door is, I mean, it's gets full sun um, every day. It, um, is exposed to the elements because I just have a screen door, but I hang this in the middle of a, a round wreath that I have that has yellow flowers on it. And I, yeah, it's faded a lot, but you know what? I have loved, I have loved seeing it every day. I love that it is there when people come to my house and that they can see it. Um, and, you know, eventually it will get to a point where it is no longer even these very faded colors. I mean, if I want to, I could always restitch it. I could always put something else there at that point. Um, and I figured the enjoyment that I have gotten out of it for the time that I am able to use it is absolutely worth it. Um, so I have not regretted that at all. Um, and then this is just a piece that I found at, I don't know, Joanne or something like this, and it just fit. It would like magically just fit. Um, and so I was able to, I just stained it and then have um, affixed it inside of that. And then there was a quote at the bottom. I think it says something about, may all who enter as strangers leave as friends or or something like that, which I, I thought was lovely, but I left off because I really just wanted the, the wording. Um, and then this house was down in the, the pattern. Uh, and so I just moved that up, removing one of the flower elements. So that is Welcome by Hands on Design. Um, originally, it was an exclusive for Welcome Stitchery. I believe that it is now available on the Hands on Design website as well. All right, another one that I stitched fairly early in the year, and this is a piece by Bent Creek called Snow. Uh, and I, I love this. Every time I talk about this one, I love the flying snowman. I love that he is just flinging himself through space and is so happy doing it. Um, and so this is a piece, they had a series of these where they did the alphabet and then some of the letters would be highlighted to spell out a particular word. So in this case, snow, um, and I changed the colors a little bit. The original piece calls for an over dyed floss that's kind of a red, white, and blue look. And so I just changed it to a very bright and cheerful blue and pink. Um, and then this is a Classic Color Works white. I think it's called Bella Rose. Um, and it has just the, the hint of pink in it, um, or depending on the dye lot. Sometimes you get ones that are kind of tannish, um, but these are, I always look for the ones that are pink because it gives you just a teeny little bit of pink in that white. So that is Snow by Bent Creek. And then this is a piece that I bought at a craft shop or a craft store and then just mounted it on that. So it was a very easy, quick finish for there as well. And um, I did a winter pattern parade just last week. Uh, and so this is one of the pieces that's going to be going up very soon um, in my display. And I'm looking forward to that. All right. This next one is a piece that I... I did not stitch this piece myself. Um, it was a pattern that I bought many years ago um, and wound up being very intimidated by it, but I loved it. And so a family member who um, lives on a boat and has a lot of time to stitch wound up stitching it for me and sent it back. Uh, and then I fully finished it. So this is another one that is in my house. And this is, um, I think it's either springtime in Williamsburg or spring in Williamsburg, something like that. And this is a piece that is available through the Colonial Williamsburg um, shop. So if you're visiting there or on their website, you can find this there and it's a cross stitch kit that was designed for them. And I, this is another one where I just found this display at a craft store. I believe, I believe this is, uh, yeah, get that. I'm so clever. Um, this is a piece that I finished with the washer and magnet method and then so far, I haven't actually hung anything else on this one, um, but I found this beautiful batik fabric and then I used very tiny lady dot trim um, just to kind of fill out those edges. And um, yeah, 
a piece that I really love. I think it's very striking. I love the colors. Um, and I've talked in the past that I'm wanting to turn this wall behind me into a kind of a display wall. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the pieces that's going to wind up going up there. So that is um, something Williamsburg, spring in Williamsburg. Um, okay, we are getting to the end. I have one pile left. Right. This next one is another hands-on design piece. Um, and this is a piece that I got at the Jingle Ball last year. So the first year of the Jingle Ball, um, Kathy Hoverman had a class that I was lucky enough to get into. Um, and so this was the class piece. I got the full kit uh, and it came with everything that you needed to stitch and fully finish this piece. And this has been released at this point, so you can find this readily available in any uh, pattern shop. And this is a classic Christmas. Um, I really love that. It's very similar lettering to Welcome. That is what really attracted me to it. The moment I saw this one, I was like, it's just like the other one. I want it. Um, and so I love that it has these kind of just very subtle reds and greens, just a little bit of a pink tint to it uh, and the berries and that kind of Christmas scene of a little village. And as I mentioned, it came with everything that you needed for the finishing. Everything was cut out, all of the batting. It was, it was the easiest finish ever. It was wonderful. And then the only change that I made is I used uh, a ribbon to make a hanger. I It's honestly a little bit too big for my Christmas tree, but I've put it there anyway because I like it. Um, but I wanted to have the option to hang it somewhere if I wanted to or to rest it. It comes with another little red easel. So I wanted to have the option to do both. So that is a classic Christmas by Hands On Design. This next one is another uh, Bent Creek piece, and this is also part of the Best Bunny Sal, and this is um, Neighbors Easter Bunny Trail. Um, and I I love this. The moment I saw that that bunny um, with his little carrot cake and the Peeps Bunnies, I, I know they're not actually, I, I think they're Peeps Bunnies. I've decided they're Peeps Bunnies. Um, I loved it. And, and so I stitched it on this, um, Kind of this is another one of the Petty Point Cashel linens. Um, there is a, in the pattern, there is a second story to this house. I just cut it out and I put the top on it um, with the address there and and just stitched the bunnies and, and shortened this topiary just a little bit so it fit as well. Um, put this ribbon on so I could kind of do it as a round design. And then this is a technique I learned from Helen D kind of putting it on this little pedestal. And then I set it so that it actually is displayed like this. Um, but again, another one that's finished with the washer and magnet method so I could swap things out. But that is um, Easter Bunny Trail by Bent Creek. The next one I have is, I'm gonna say that one. This is one that I stitched many years ago. Most I stitched most of it many years ago, and it was originally intended to be a gift for a friend. Um, years passed, um, and kind of that we've we've moved away from each other in in life. But you know, as as you do with people. Um, but I wanted to keep finishing it because I had done so much of the work on it, um, and so I eventually finished it. And this is the Inspire Tree by M Designs. So if you um, look, you can actually see it spells out, excuse me, inspire. Um, and I stitched this, I think it was on like a 30 count. Let me see, do I have this? No, I don't have it noted. I think it was a 30 count opalescent linen, something like that, because it does have just a little bit of gold in it. Um, and I used one of the DMC variegated threads for it. Um, but I had done almost all of it. I think I had done everything except one, the bottom of one tree. And I was like, I really need to finish this piece. So I did finish it. Um, and then I decided to fully finish it in this little frame. And I like the fact that you can hang it either way. Like to me, this is a Christmas piece. Um, it looks like a Christmas piece, but you could also just put it here so you can actually read it if you want to. Um, and so I finished it in a way that you could do either of those very simply in this frame that I spray painted. Uh, and then I put some lady dot trim. So um, it's a piece that I like. It's not a piece that I love. I wanted to finish it just to have it done. Um, Again, like it's it's a piece I like. It's not a piece I love, but I am happy to have it done. And it was an experiment and a, a learning, an opportunity to learn something. So there we go. That's um, by M Design. 
And then the very last one that I want to show you is yet another hands-on design piece. I definitely stitched a lot of those last year. She is one of my favorite designers. Uh, and this is Hop On In. Um, and I love that pun. I love the excellent service. Um, and I stitched these using sulky threads. And this was the same 18 count linen that I used for my carrot. Um, and then I put it in this little frame. This is actually a Halloween frame. Um, and then with this kind of very bright kind of floral fabric, and it came with this hanger. So very simple finish. I like that I can hang it. I can just rest it on something if I want to. Um, I, I really enjoy those colors. I like the design and the kind of the punniness of it. So that is Hop On In by Hands On Design. So with that, I believe I'm looking around to make sure I didn't miss a pile, but I think that that is all of my, um, the finishes that I was able to achieve this year. I need to, when I write this down, I'm going to actually check, but I think it was 33 pieces that were either fully finished or finished in, in 2023. I think that that is a great track record. I'm excited um, to see what 2024 will bring. I am going to record a whip parade um, and then kind of talk about plans for 2024. I've learned a lot this year about my own stitching and, and, and what encourages me, what inspires me to stitch, um, what is how I can break down larger projects into uh, manageable chunks, things like that. So I, I'm excited to see what 2024 will bring as well. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed this video, Have you that you had fun. And um, if you're doing 12 by 12, if you're celebrating um, New Year's Eve in any way, I hope that you enjoy or whenever you're watching this, I hope that 2024 brings um, you and your family a wonderful year. And I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Bye, everybody.